The more you know about the e-commerce platforms you're considering, the better. In this video, I'm gonna define what Salesforce Commerce Cloud is by breaking down its history, talking about its tech stack, and discussing the platform's general strengths and weaknesses. If you're new around here, my name is TJ Gamble and I'm the founder and CEO of Jamerson, where we've been helping accelerate businesses e-commerce growth for over 20 years. Let's jump right into it. What is Salesforce Commerce Cloud? Well, according to Salesforce's marketing material, Salesforce Commerce Cloud is a leading B2C e-commerce solution that maximizes conversions across all digital channels. Online, mobile, social, and more, our digital commerce platform simplifies the way brands create, launch, and maintain multiple sites by using a single system to manage all customer engagement channels. I think the word leading is probably required by law on these marketing descriptions, regardless not an overly helpful description, so let's break it down more and we'll start with a brief history of the platform. This story actually starts way back in 1995 when Net Consultant released the Intershop e-commerce platform, which was one of the first to actually hit the market. Now, unfortunately, Net Consultant fell on hard times during the dot-com collapse of the early 2000s. During this time, they spun off 30 separate companies, including Intershop, which was rebranded as Demandware. By 2012, Demandware had risen in popularity and was, dare I say it, a leading e-commerce platform. They decided to go public that year, but were then acquired in 2016 by Salesforce for $2.8 billion and eventually rebranded as Salesforce Commerce B2C. The following year, 2017, for those not good with numbers, Salesforce also acquired the Cloud Craze B2B e-commerce platform, which was also eventually rebranded as Salesforce Commerce B2B. They then rewrote Cloud Craze on the Salesforce architecture and released it as B2B on Lightning, which is a weird name. Lightning bolt. Sleep. Lightning bolt. Then, just to confuse us more, they went and released another version based on the B2B platform called B2B2C. B2B2C isn't exactly as robust as their B2C platform, but it does allow you to do B2B and B2C in the same system so they could check that box if you're looking for it. Your e-commerce platform decision really just got a lot more difficult because Salesforce Commerce Cloud is not an e-commerce platform. It's four different e-commerce platforms, all with their own strengths and weaknesses. Salesforce Commerce B2C, Salesforce Commerce B2B Classic, Salesforce Commerce B2B on Lightning, and Salesforce Commerce B2B2C on Lightning. Lord have mercy. What a mess that is, but let's move on. Before we get into that tech stack, consider hitting the like button and subscribing as both help us out a lot and drop your questions and thoughts in the comments or feel free to contact me using the link in the description if you wanna discuss it further. Also, I've created a download where I go through the types of e-commerce businesses that I think Salesforce Commerce Cloud is perfect for and some projects that I think should avoid it. A link should pop up here, but there's also one in the description you can click on once we're done. Let's talk about Salesforce Commerce Cloud's architecture. Now I'm just gonna breeze through the high level stuff. Salesforce Commerce Cloud in all of its current offerings is a SaaS platform or software as a service. And that architecture has distinct strengths and weaknesses. Although it's pretty flexible for a SaaS platform, it's not going to be as flexible as open source software. But being SaaS, you don't have to worry about the hosting infrastructure. As far as development goes, it really depends on which version you choose. On the legacy B2C version, most sites are gonna use the storefront reference architecture, which you can think of as their starter theme and module combination. It's a collection of server-side and client-side JavaScript to help you get your projects up and going faster. You also need to brush up on your XML to customize things and get familiar with their custom proprietary internet store markup language. ISML if you're gonna be building your own user experiences. ISML is a combination of HTML, custom tags, and scripts similar to Java server pages if you've ever had the displeasure of working with those. If you use the new Lightning versions of B2B or B2C, you'll just be using a lot of JavaScript at Apex, which is sort of like Java, but for Salesforce. Now, Salesforce Commerce Cloud has some general strengths of note. They have a strong reputation for providing amazing support with their dedicated CSMs or customer success managers. Another primary strength with Salesforce are their other tools. Salesforce has what they call Customer 360, where you can have a clearer picture of your customer's buying journey by tracking them through every touch point 
with your business. This can be powerful if you're using all of the other tools needed to power this functionality. If you are using the other tools, then it just makes sense to at least consider their e-commerce platform as well. And as I mentioned earlier, their platforms are also fairly flexible for SaaS platforms. I mean, this is not your average lockdown SaaS e-commerce platform, but that flexibility also plays into the weaknesses. So let's get into my opinion on the primary weaknesses of Salesforce Commerce Cloud. I hear that implementation costs can be fairly pricey and take a little longer than a lot of the other platforms. I mean, they're really trying to ride that fine line between the benefits of SaaS while also providing some flexibility. And that adds complexity that you don't normally see in a SaaS implementation and really some odd complexity that you wouldn't see in an open source project. Despite releasing the newer Salesforce Commerce Cloud APIs, I'm also hearing that they still have work to do on their APIs, which is a big concern for a SaaS platform. Headless is still a bit of a challenge on their platforms, so do your research if you're thinking of going that route. Salesforce is also kind of pricey on the license fees, but know that everything in life is a negotiation. You didn't hear it from me, but the end of their fiscal year is in January. So you have a lot more negotiating leverage if you're closing the deal by the end of that month to get some discounts. They also have a more limited selection of third-party modules and support compared to other popular platforms. And a lot of the modules, or cartridges as they call them, require some customization to make work. But that's just my opinion. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. As I mentioned before, I have a guide that outlines the e-commerce businesses that I believe Salesforce Commerce Cloud is perfect for and a few projects that should avoid it. Here's a link that should pop up or you can find it in the description to download that guide. Of course, contact me using the link in the descriptions if you have questions and I'll see you next time.